you can relay that to them in a way, in a confident way, you're likely to get that listing. So the big question is, what are top agents doing to absolutely crush it in real estate? To get the answers, we interview the top real estate agents to learn their secrets to success. If you would like one-on-one -on -one access to over 26 of the top agents in the country to help you scale your business, then head over to eliteagentsecrets.com slash partner, or you can just click the link in the description below. My name is Andrew Dunn. And my name is Peter Michael. Welcome to Elite Agent Secrets. All of this stuff for me kind of rolls into our second topic, which is your mindset around this shit, especially at the beginning, where you're like, backs against the wall, seven kids, 78 deals. That's only your first year, and you did, what, north of 100 deals last year. Um, and it's just like, you've obviously just got a, 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 like a Spartan mindset. Like, I, I'm, I'm in this motherfucker. <laughs> like, I'm all yeah. the in. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not dipping my toe in. I am fucking head first in. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy because I hear all the time, you know, one of the agents that I interviewed a couple of weeks ago, she said, um, she's like, well, I just don't know a lot of people. And I explained to her, I was like, well, that's not a reason that you're not doing well. You know, uh, honestly, let me ask you this. What's what do you have more opportunity with the people you know or the people you don't know? And she's people like, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. The people you I'm like, she, she honestly, I think she struggled to answer it, but I'm like, it's the people you don't know. Let me give you an example of that. When I left it, I didn't have my sphere working with me. I didn't have my family wanting to work with me. I didn't have my friends working to work with me because they saw me as the bartender slash IT person, not the real estate person. What I figured out early on was that if I get in front of a bunch of people who don't know me, I could be anybody I want to as long as I'm confident and knowledgeable. And guess what happened? I started doing that, and then I started sharing my success online, and then all my friends in, in sphere started wanting to work with me. So the opportunity was with the people who didn't know me because they didn't know they didn't know what I was capable of, what, of in the real estate market other than what I relayed to them through my confidence and knowledge. Is it, isn't it crazy how the people that don't know you support you a whole lot more, especially when you're starting out a new venture than the people that, you know, are so close and near dear, dear to your heart that you think would have been with you all the way they just they just happen to find their way once you start to know your shit and become successful <laughs> absolutely absolutely and it's just it's mindset you know and i told like i told her um she said well i can't beat all these other agents that are new out there i was like well what's the one thing you have that we don't have and she's like i don't know i'm like it, you're new your drive your willingness to do everything you can to get that property sold that's going to carry a lot more weight than someone else who's just taking a bunch of listings to get a bunch of listings because they've been in the market forever yeah. If you can relay that to them in a way, in a confident way, you're likely to get that listing. It's that in conjunction, uh, like I, obviously uh, you mentioned, or we mentioned in the uh, opening that you've got a team. It's like new agent combined with like a team who's got a good track record can actually be like a bit of a dream combination because it's like, listen, like you're my one and only. It's like a marriage. Like I'm going to make sure we do the best shit. But. Mm -hmm. I've also got a team who last year or, you know, who's done over a thousand deals and they're going to be behind me a hundred percent on this. So not only are you getting my focus, you're getting their experience. Absolutely. And that's why like we're actually, I think more supporters of teams than a lot of other agents, not saying that you need to, there was obviously some people go out and just crush it as solo agents. Like we, we've interviewed a lot and that is absolutely fine. But I also think it's people have a, a wariness around teams because there is bad teams, right? Like we're, we're all with EXP here. We all have our own organizations and things like that. And one of the things that I'm sure you've commonly heard and everyone who's a part of EXP has commonly heard is that, oh, why are people leaving? And when they actually get spoken to, it's because when they joined that organization or that team within EXP, they didn't get any support. It wasn't that EXP was a bad model. It's they wanted somebody to actually help them. And someone brought them in to be a number on a board as opposed to like being a part of their organization, which is why culture inside of an EXP organization, even if it's international, is so important. That's why some people have thousands and thousands of people in their greater international teams, because it's like, I'm going to support these like they're in the office next to me. And like that, yeah. that I think coincides with that whole like team mentality. It's like you can get support from people further ahead, but you can have the focus and the single mindedness to be like, that person is going to get all of my effort and I get one run on the board. And listen, like, you know, in this day and age, we're getting paid 10 grand plus, you know, or like 10K for a, 
um, a transaction, right? It's like five grand, 10 grand, whatever it is for transactions. Listen, it's like, that's nothing to be, you know, and nothing to shy away from, right? When you look at, say, average um, average salaries inside of the US. So mm-hmm. one of the other things with I wanted to ask you about mindset is, because you do have a team and you've just spoken then is, you've got a strong mindset and you had your back against a wall. But I imagine a lot of other people inside of your team and potentially organization aren't in that situation where they are doing this because they want to get into it. They want to make money. What are some of the things that you've done that you found have worked to help other people's mindsets for that like success and grit and determination? Because it can be taught to a certain degree, but some people have it more than others. Like you tend to find the people at the top and the entrepreneurs have that like deep down grit where they don't need someone pushing them. They push themselves but other people need a little bit more help. What are some of the things you've come across on that front? I'm curious. Um, You know, in all honesty, um, so this is, again, this goes back to night mindset too. One of the things that I, that has helped me out is realizing what my flaws are. Um, I am a tech person. I can convert pretty much anything, but as a leader, um, I mean, I'm a softy. Right. So what I found was hiring people for the things that I'm not good at is much more better for the business and for the team than me trying to do everything that I think I can be good at. Right. Right. So, for example, hiring a leader, hiring a leader, hiring someone who's willing to train, someone who's willing to um, help help um, people realize their goals and help them help them uh, accomplish those through the resources that are provided by the team. Um, I've learned that. If, if I did all over again, I would have joined a team in a heartbeat. And I ch- try to tell people that, like, listen, there's so much support. You get to learn from what mistakes not to make. You get to identify what you do and don't like. But like you said, there are good and bad teams, right? Yeah. Um, but going back to your question, I think it's surrounding yourself by by leaders who can help you carry out the mission and the goal to to promote people and their and their dreams. That takes a lot of self-awareness and actually like a bit of humble pie in a way because a lot of people get into this and they're the sales jock and they're going out and they're crushing, they're making the money and they naturally feel like they should be the person who kind of rolls into, let's say, the CEO role, right? Like you're leading everything and you're managing everything. So you've obviously got quite a lot of self-awareness where you've gone, that's not my jam. Like I'll bring other people in to do that stuff because like, that's just not where I'm the most competent and it's not where I'll deliver the best version of me to the team. Right. So I'll hire a better leader. I'll hire a better coach. Who's going to help these people achieve what they want to achieve. Um, which is, is very interesting that you've actually said that and opened up about that. Cause I think a lot of people, they might be in that situation and they won't admit it though. They'll be like, no, I run the team. It's me. Yeah. It's, it's just get rid of your fucking ego. <laughs> you know, like I, I, most people don't even know I've opened up a brokerage. I've never promoted it. Most people don't even know I bought a, a expensive ass boat last week because I don't promote that. Congratulations! Stuff. Like, oh you. But I don't. It's not. It's not about that for me. My thing is I like helping people. I want to help people succeed. I want to give people the opportunities and the chances that I didn't have, but was able to give myself um, and some of the people that helped me. So I want to pass that forward, right? Um, so it's it mostly like you said it comes down to ego if you look my name's really not anywhere as far as the team the brokerage or anything goes like that other than when i have to step into a leadership role but most of the people they'll tell you i don't usually run the show i'm usually behind the scenes and i consider everyone to be sales partners or you know things like that like i have one of the agents who when i went my, to my car to the shop she's like oh that's my boss i was like no that's my sales partner and i had to correct her on that you know yeah so treat people with respect and get rid of the ego. I love it. That's how, yeah. And I know that's a little bit hard, especially at times, right? Where it's like, it's totally okay for you to admit that you may not be the best person to run the team or to do X or to do Y, but it takes a tremendous amount of self-awareness. First of all, to realize that. Mm-hmm. Second, it takes a, another I don't even know the trade. Maybe Andrew helped me out here. But basically to accept that you're not the best at it and pass it down, delegate it down, leverage it out. And I know that's one of Andrew's favorite topics is basically the leverage. Yeah. Because if you stuck with it and you didn't take your ego out of it, you probably wouldn't be where you are today. 
probably running right. into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and th- that's totally okay. Like we believe in teams, but we don't necessarily want to run one. However, we have the proper people and support and we created the leverage for others to have a successful experience on our team. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm the opposite where it's like, I actually enjoy the chaos of running that I like being at the top. Like I, there's something about it for me that just, there's a lot of shit that goes on there, but I, I just give, it gets me out of bed in the morning. I know other people that drains the shit out of them, but I genuinely enjoy it. Like, you know, and that, that is kind of, I guess, one of my strengths. And thanks for listening to this episode. If you would like one-on-one access to over 26 of the top agents in the country to help you scale your business, then head over to EliteAgentSecrets.com partner, or you can just click the link in the description below. 